Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to take a look at how Anthony will fit into Ten Hag's Manchester United by taking a look at what his arrival could mean to the starting 11 formation and tactics. Remember to subscribe if you're new. We're so close to 300k. Subscribe now, and we can get there. Let's go! Anyway, let's get this party started. After a summer of speculation, Manchester United have brought in attacking reinforcements, signing Anthony from Ajax for a potential final fee of 100 million euros. A previous favourite of Eric Ten Hag, what should Manchester United fans expect from his arrival? In terms of his standout attributes, Anthony is a dynamic and creative inverted winger. He's got extreme acceleration, great agility and body balance, not to mention real aggression in his play that you get from South American forwards. He's an excellent 1v1 dribbler, a dangerous passer and has a wicked shot. At Ajax, Anthony is mainly played on the right flank. From this starting position, he holds the width extremely well, which stretches the opposition and creates central space for his teammates. Alternatively, if the opposition decide to stay compact, Anthony is given acres of space to operate in. The problem that Anthony creates is that he can thrive in either situation. If he's given time and space to get his head up, Anthony can deliver very accurate crosses, notably whipped crosses to the back post that only take a touch to fly in. However, if there's no obvious target, he'll drive inside with the ball where he can become a bigger threat. He's very dangerous in these situations and likes to cut inside to get shots off, often trying to pick out the far corner. In fact, only Feyenoord's Kopchu scored more goals from outside the box from open play in their Eredivisie last season than Anthony, and the Brazilian played almost 900 minutes less. But Anthony has more to his game than long shots. He loves quick interplay, notably one-twos with an interior. But where the space is, it decides to influence what Anthony does. He's an extremely intelligent player, and if there's space out wide, he'll follow up his pass with an underlapping run, getting in behind the defence. Meanwhile, if the space is central, he'll play a wall pass and move further inside. We saw an example of this underlap in last season's home win over Vitesse, picking up possession with Lisandro Martinez. He plays a progressive reverse pass to Max Rowie, who turns and plays it wide to Anthony. Anthony lifts a pass down the line and makes a run inside. Matsurawi controls, back heels it, and Anthony smashes the ball into the bottom corner. This is a great goal to highlight Anthony's typical style of play, initially holding the whip on the last line, where he can be a threat in behind with his speed. Then as the play unfolds, the ball comes to him and he's intelligent enough to play the ball wide before he's closed down to exploit the space. Then, not only does he make a great run, but he's got the composure and the ability to shift the ball onto his left foot and finish in two quick touches. Which brings me on to another big strength of the Brazilian, Anthony's ability to operate in tight spaces. This is a sign of a top talent. Anthony doesn't rely on pure speed to beat his man. Instead, his quick feet, close control, and impressive agility allow him to unbalance his opponent and wriggle past them. It also allows him to still keep the ball when he's doubled up on by turning and jinking to beat multiple players. And it's something we've seen more of this season from the Brazilian. Meanwhile, without the ball, Anthony works hard for the team. Schooled by Ten Hag, Anthony is a good presser, curving his run to funnel the opposition according to specific match tactics. What's more is that he does this with real aggression and tenacity. He won the ball through tackles and interceptions 1.8 times per 90 last season. In fact, compared to United forwards per 90 in the 20 21-22 season, only Anthony Alanga won possession more times than Anthony. Although the Ajax man added a lot more shots to his side attack than anyone in the United shirt. When a big money transfer arrives, it's easy to get sucked into the fee and expect them to be the finished player, but Anthony has a lot of potential to improve. He's already an exceptional player who's very unique and he can get even better. With just two years of European football under his belt, Anthony will get better with more game time. We've already started to see some evolution this season. In Ajax's 6-1 win over Groningen, Anthony played on the left wing and thrived. Instead of coming inside, he ran the line and granted Ajax more opportunity to hit the byline through underlap thanks to his wider passing angle from the left foot. This position also allowed him to make use of his impressive crossing as he exploited a big overload at the back post for Ajax's third goal, picking out Steven Berghaus with a measured delivery. And with more game time, Anthony will only get better. So what does this mean for Manchester United? It's pretty clear that he'll slot in on the right wing, but the versatility he started to show will still allow him to interchange flanks with the other wide man. Not only will he add another quality attacker into a fairly lightweight forward line, as well as being a completely different option, a left-footed natural right winger. 
but Anthony's knowledge of Ten Hag's system and philosophy will allow him to integrate immediately into the first team, only needing to build on relationships with his new teammates. In terms of improvements Man United will see, other than adding more direct quality dribbling, as well as making things happen in the final third by creating chances and taking shots, Anthony will bring aggression and energy to the high press, which we saw in the 2-1 win over Liverpool, energetic players inspire teammates to press harder. He's also more of a direct dribbler than Jadon Sancho, which will bring a different threat. More likely to use his tricks to dribble his opponent, Anthony will create chances out of nothing. This will give Ten Hag options. Not every game or opponent requires the same game plan, and being able to make changes is crucial. Now, with Alanga, Sancho, Rashford, Anthony to choose from, as well as 18-year-old Ganacho, Ten Hag has quality options to choose the best tools for the job. The Brazilian flair and aggression that Anthony plays with should be well suited to the Premier League. Like with all new, young signings, expect him to need time to adapt. But his all-round play, his passing, positional awareness, his ability 1v1, not to mention his aggression and tenacity, will be apparent from his first appearance. Last season, Anthony had a great battle with Tyrell Malassia, the same Malassia that pocketed Mohamed Salah in his first Premier League start. Anthony came on top with 71 touches, the fifth most on the pitch. He won seven of his 11 ground duels, completed five of his six dribbles, and scored the winning goal against a defensively sound opponent. It's also important to remember that he's still learning his trade, and he's still improving. The Anthony of today is even better than the Anthony who was directly involved in six goals in last season's Champions League group stages. In fact, since the start of last season, Five of his eight best rated performances according to Instat have come since February. Still just 22 with the potential to be a truly world class player. Anthony might cost a lot of money, but it's well worth it. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will Anthony be a success at Manchester United? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?